Yeah, Frame Raider! In my late Halloween video about 360's indie scene, I covered some truly cursed games. Today, we'll be taking a quick look at 12 not-so-cursed indie games. For right now, at least, you can only play these if you have a modded Xbox 360. But if you don't have one, most of these games are available on Steam. One example is the tongue-in-cheek classic known as DLC Quest. Oh no, the villain has stolen the princess! Gonna have to save her, right? Well, not so easy when many essential features of the game are missing. Starting off, the player can only move to the right. There's no jumping, no animation, not even sound effects. It's all gonna cost ya. So grab some coins, and buy the necessary DLCs from the shopkeeper to progress. Of course, no real-world money is used here. DLC Quest is a fairly linear game. You can freely roam around, but there's only so many places to go. Most of which are blocked off for some ridiculous reason that requires purchasing more DLC. This game is quite enjoyable, although in reality it's more like a jab at the state of the gaming industry at the time. Good thing it only improved from here, right? Right? Applejack is an absolute joy to play. Just look at all these bright colors. The goal is to eliminate every living thing on screen. Just pick them up and throw them at each other. How fun! All the while you score coins, which are part of a timed combo system. Look at how many coins you can spawn in without a noticeable drop in frame rate. Ooh, the power of 360! There's a variety of moves that become necessary as you progress, like wall jumping, extended throws, even Samus's ball roll in the form of your apple head. Ten minutes in, they introduce enemy shield colors. If you throw the wrong colored enemy at another, it'll just bounce away. What started as a pretty simple platformer quickly turns into a puzzler, and I'm all for it. Heads up, if you're prone to seizures, maybe skip this part. Beat Hazard is a unique twin-stick shooter that puts you against giant asteroids and enemy ships. What's unique here is that it relies on your system's stored music to create levels. Each stage starts off fairly weak, but quickly amps up as you progress. Eventually, it turns into a chaotic light show that synchronizes with the beat. Enemy ships even spawn in accordance to this. One criticism is that it can be hard to determine your hitbox with all the flashing lights. And personally, I do not care for boss fights in this game, they kill the flow in my opinion. But hey, they release a bunch of power-ups after. That helps. Now, I played this game years ago, and at the time I thought it was a joke, honestly. Barely anything happened in-game. But by spending more time with it, I've noticed that this depends on the type of music you're playing. I can't tell you what determines a good track, but I found that electronic music works exceptionally well. If you haven't played Beat Hazard yet, what are you waiting for? A Bon Hawkins and the Thousand Spikes you're headed into a series of dangerous traps that must be navigated exactly as the designers intended. Survival is based on trial and error, so you'll die a lot, but you can keep going until you've lost all 1,000 of your lives. Yes, it is a rage game, but I feel like that term's oversimplifying it. There are also adventure elements like key collecting and movable platforms. Just beware of the scorpions, which you can kill with your infinite throwing knives, but those creatures are fast. If you're willing to look past the game's many frustrations, you'll have a great time. Just try not to get too addicted. Dark. In this game you play as... a stretched rhombus, I guess? With the exception of your cartoony eyeballs, you and all other physical entities are dark. Everything you can see is partially illuminated, with lighting effects that react accordingly to the environment. You'll be solving a variety of physics puzzles to essentially get from point A to B. Completing the whole thing takes about 15 minutes. You will enjoy what's here, it's pretty creative, but considering its short length, Dark feels more like a tech demo than a real game. I certainly don't regret trying it, though. Super Amazing Wagon Adventure Nearly half a million Americans migrated west over the wagon trails. This is the story of one party of three and their adventure. While inspired by old PC text adventures, this plays more like a series of Atari 2600 games. First, you'll be collecting animals for food, then fighting off bandits. Eventually, you'll need to pass a herd of charging buffalo, and close it off by giving flowers to your girlfriend. Now it's a twin-stick shooter, and I'm fighting off... zombies? What kept me playing this one was the unending curiosity to see what happens next. Will I go around or jump over the river? 
beautiful. Platypus is a classic 2002 PC shmup that became an XBLIG. You'd think this would have been an Xbox Live Arcade game. Not sure why it ended up here. Platypus is a work of art in shmup form, as its graphics are made entirely of photographed clay sculptures. Pretty incredible, isn't it? As a shmup, the gameplay is traditional. Destroy ships and collect power-ups, which are excellent to use, by the way. Each type has distinct positives and negatives in combat. It's often a difficult game, but you can even the odds at any time by having a friend drop in. Have patience, though, as single missions can take around 15 minutes to complete. Yeah, I wish they were a bit shorter, but it's a great time nonetheless, so I recommend giving it a shot. Here's a cool isometric game, Little Racer's Street. It's a fast-paced racer, obviously, taking place within considerably small racetracks. By winning races, you earn credits. These can be used to buy new cars or update your existing ones. With the variety of maps and occasional weather conditions, Little Racer's Street is a more complete game than I was expecting. What really blew me away were the camera choices, including a chase perspective for a more traditional experience. Whatever your preference, Little Racer's Street is a solid game. Miner Dig Deep You're placed at the entrance of a mine, with nothing but a nearby shop to buy items from. You can dig, find minerals, run out of inventory space, then sell the minerals, buy new tools, and dig some more. Sometimes you'll run out of flashlight power while digging. Without it, you're unable to see the surrounding minerals, at which point, to keep exploring would be pointless. You can still see the paths that you've created thus far, though, which are permanent in the game world. That means if you get yourself screwed in a hole somewhere, you'll have to either respawn for a cash penalty, or use your climbing equipment. Hope you've bought some by now. Had this game been fleshed out a little more, it could have been a mega hit. I guess Terraria took its spot. Zombie Estate is a simple, pixel art twin-stick shooter with just one available map. It's a good map, though. Lots of space to dodge zombies, and a cozy estate in the middle to circle around. Kill every zombie on the map, and you complete a wave. In between waves, you can use your collected profit to buy crazy new guns and ammunition. Zombie Estate is playable with up to four people, which I strongly suggest over single play. It takes an increasingly long time to complete waves on your own, and for little profit. With a friend at least, this game is a fun time waster. Inferno. Radiant Games made a couple of these visually engaging twin stick shooters. This is the only one that I've played. Akin to Geometry Wars, it doesn't hold back with the visual effects. There are glowing neon lights as far as the eye can see. Your mission is simple. Navigate through the maze while collecting keys to reach an exit. While doing so, avoid its many enemies and hazards. Defense upgrades can be purchased from a shop that include rapid-fire attacks, fighter drones, deployable bombs, and more. Playable and cooperative with up to four people, Inferno is a blast, so grab a friend and wreak havoc. Alternatively, you could run away instead. You'll play as this unlucky fellow running through the neighborhood, escaping all the trouble he's caused. I really like the art style here. Every frame looks like something you'd have drawn as a kid, and the sound effects perfectly match that energy. This game is, of course, a runner, so you'll spend most of your time jumping over obstacles, trying not to get caught by whoever's chasing from behind. Enough screw-ups and you lose, but a long jump can help you get ahead. Standard jumps are atypical, though. The player hovers in air for longer than you'd initially expect. I found this unfamiliarity led to frequent over and under shoots, which is likely an intended layer of challenge, as otherwise it might be too easy. All in all, Runaway is a great lighthearted game to unwind with after a hard day. I recommend it. All right, those were some indie classics from the XBLIG. If you have the ability to play them yourself, by all means, there are some great underappreciated gems here. Despite shutting down the service, Xbox still supports indie games. Currently they do so with ID at Xbox, although their standards now are much higher than they ever were during XBLIG. It'd be cool if they allowed for more entry-level content here, as it inspires beginners to better their skills and pursue greater ventures. I always get a kick out of these XBLA videos. They've introduced me to a bunch of games that, good or bad, I'd probably never know about otherwise. If you'd like to hear more from me in the future, consider subscribing to the channel. See you next time!